Okay, let's look at verse 3. And has borne. So this church really put up with it. They bore it. And has patience. See, they put up with it. They had a lot of patience. And for my name's sake has labored. See, they work so hard, sweating in pain for Jesus' name's sake. That's a good church. And has not fainted. See, they didn't faint. They didn't throw in the towel yet. Kind of sounds like our church, hopefully, right? Kind of sounds like it. But now, if you feel like this is our church, I want you to read verse 4. This is very important. If you feel like you're this church, if you think you're so spiritual, you're not lay out to say a church, but you're like this church, I guarantee verse 4 is going to put you under conviction. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Jesus said, despite of all these good things, nevertheless, I've got something against you. Because thou hast left thy first love. They left their first love for Jesus Christ. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Jesus now wants them to remember where they fell from their first love, where they forgotten. And repent and do the first words. So Jesus wants them to repent and start recalling that first love where they did their first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly... If they don't do it, Jesus is going to come quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place. See, Jesus is going to remove that church. Remember, the seven candlesticks are the seven churches, right? So this one part of the candlestick, Church of Ephesus, Jesus said, I'm going to remove it out of its place. Except what? Thou repent. Except you repent. Except you get right with God. San Jose Bible Baptist Church can boast all the numbers of souls, faithfulness, labor, sweat, but if you've forgotten your first love, your first works, and you don't remember where you fell on that and you don't repent, then God's going to quickly, that verse said quickly, right, at verse 5, he's going to quickly remove this church out of here. And then you're going to recall back, man, I remember those days at San Jose Bible Baptist Church. Why did I forget my first love? So some of you might be wondering, what do you mean by this first love? Here's the idea. The first love is, let's go to Matthew 22. And then I have to finish this quickly. So I'm surprised how much time has passed. Okay, let's jump to Matthew 22. Because think about this, church. Why are you today at church? Because you're supposed to? Because you put your name at a sign-up sheet, so you're supposed to do it? Why is it that you read your Bible and pray? Because it's an uh, obligation and duty? Why do you praise the Lord? Why do some of you even run around the room? Because somebody else is doing it? Think about this. You're doing this because you love Jesus to begin with. But it is so easy to be caught up with the weariness of the flesh. Ritual, legalistic duties. Just like the majority of independent, fundamental Baptist churches and colleges. Bob Jones University, Pensacola Christian College, Tennessee Temple, West Coast Baptist College. And am I offending some people right here? So you got to realize this. The problem with these churches, when they lay out all these rules and dress codes and stuff like that, is that they think by doing that, they're going to get the kids right with God. No, I know of a BJU alumni who had a queer uh, homosexual alumni regathering. BJU, Bob Jones University. Crying out loud. I know of people who went to PCC and then they ended up in some ecumenical church complaining about PCC's uh, rigorous legalism. What happened? They did not emphasize first love, loving Jesus, and that's why your dressing will be right. That's why you're going to abide by these rules. That's why you're going to love learning the scriptures. That's why we think homosexuality is a sin. Amen. They don't do that. They think that by establishing all these rules, you just follow. No, what you got to do is that you got to put the love of Jesus in their hearts. That has to be prioritized. And then all these other things, it's going to come out. Now, that's one thing you notice in this church, right? So why do I give a lot of freedom in this church? Now, trust me, I draw a line, and you'll notice that I do that sometimes. I'll say, hey, you know, we carried it this far, so you got to get this right and that right. So I'll do that if I have to, but only if I have to. What I aim for is the heart and let God's word in preach and convict you and my testimony and my prayer affect you, and that's how we all eventually change. And isn't that why you change more and more? 
because of the Lord convicting your heart, your love. When you love Jesus Christ, trust me, you don't need a Bible verse from Pastor Kim on why marijuana, smoking marijuana is a sin. And I got a lot of onliners mad at me just now because of that. You know why? Because you're so fleshy-centered in your heart, not Jesus Christ. You don't believe me? Look at Matthew 22. And look what Jesus said. How to fulfill all the rules, all the rules of the law is verse, 38, uh, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ah, not just loving Jesus, but loving others. When you do these two things, look at this, on these two commandments hang what? All the law and the prophets. What do you have to say about a rule concerning about a skirt at a certain length and blah, blah, blah? And very simple, we just look at the heart. Why do you dress that way to begin with? Look, just look at the heart, man. It's that simple. And then all the rules and regulations will come out. Pastor don't need to tell you, you know, how long your hair should be and, you know, the length of your skirt. And then, uh, you know, you gentlemen on what you should have in your house or what music to listen to, uh, what television show you shouldn't watch. I don't have to tell you. You do know. You do know. Okay. You do know. Let's go back to our main text here. Oh, I came here for revelation about the 13th toenail of the Antichrist. I didn't come here for this, man. I didn't come here for this, man. All right, let's look at Revelation. At verse 6, verse 6. I want to finish this church, so let me at least finish this church and we'll call it a day. But this thou hast. So Jesus says, there is something, though, you do have. Something good you do have, though. That thou, look at this, hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. A good thing they had was that they hated, yes, you should hate, right. okay? There's a good hatred. You should hate the deeds of these Nicolaitans, Jesus called them, which I hate. Okay, who are the Nicolaitans, pastor? Nicolaitans. So Nic Nico is concerning about conquering laitans, laity. Okay, you ever heard of the clergy? You know what clergy is, right? That's like uh, me, your pastor. Laity is who? It's you, common audience people. Nico is like conquering, conquering the laity. Now, this makes sense. If, you look at your, if we look at prophecy here of church age prophecy, this makes sense why the Catholic Church eventually came out. The apostolic fathers had a problem with conquering more and more of the laity. Why, where do we get these terms? Popes, cardinals, and bishops, and all this coming from priests. It started here, conquering the laity. But Ephesus at least resisted it. But when you get to Smyrna, it talks about where Satan's seed is. And then when you get to Pergamos, they compromise with the wrong doctrine. They hate it at the beginning, but they lost their first love. What does that mean? That means this church. And pretty soon, this church will end up like a cultic room one day if we're not careful. So that was a problem. So a lot of these church fathers during the century are really good people. There are good stories concerning Irenaeus, where he died for Jesus Christ embracing the lions. Polycarp burnt at the stake. You can go to Pius, just a martyr. Tertullian is probably the best church father out of all church fathers. But some of these people in indicated baptism. Uh, water baptism for salvation. It was like they're slipping that in. And then more of a conquering laity and some Catholic doctrine here and there. That's why Catholic Church loves church fathers because they'll see a support of their doctrine through, the, through these historical evidences. But our historical evidence is simple. It's the word of God and it already warned you a long time ago Amen. about these people. He that hath an ear, verse 7, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, you all got ears? Okay, that's what it means. Then hear what Jesus is speaking to you. So this is prophetic to the whole church age. Makes sense. Now, look at this. To him that overcometh, if you overcome, uh, will I give to eat of the tree of life. So you can eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, here we go. Let's close it right here. In God's paradise up in heaven, 
And we're going to see this pretty soon at Revelation 22. There is a tree of life. Now, I don't know if the camera got this because I'm way up there. But there is a tree of life right over here. Now, how do we do this double application is very simple. You ready for this? This is a little tip from hermeneutics. When you read the Bible, what, do you, what is the first thing you do? You try to learn something from it, right? You read it as if it was talking to you, right? So that's what you do. What you do is try to apply everything to yourself until there's something that contradicts your Christian doctrine. If it contradicts your Christian doctrine, then you have to put a red flag and say, I wonder if there's a different application. That's what we're going to do here. Notice when, that this paradise eating the tree of life for eternal life. See, this is eternal life right here that you're getting. Is, from, is by overcoming. And I get a lot of people online saying, well, what about this verse of Revelation 2, Revelation 3 about overcoming, overcoming. So I have a problem with my sins, so I lose eternal life. That's not applied to you. That's to the tribulation. Now look at Revelation 22. Revelation 22, and then we'll look at 1 John 5. 1 John 5. Now the answer is very simple. This passage is not talking about us overcoming here. This is referring to tribulation saints. You might say, why? Because the overcoming, we already overcome. You might say, really? Yeah, by believing on Jesus Christ. If you believed on Jesus Christ for your salvation, you already overcome. That's the church. Tribulation is different. You're going to see works. That's their overcoming. So that's for tribulation saints. I hope it got all of that on camera. Okay, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God, what? Overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? See that? So you're already overcome. So this passage at Revelation does not apply to you. Some anti-dispensational salvation people, they would like to say, oh no, this has to apply only to Christian church. But you can't do that. Look at Revelation 22. Revelation 22. Remember, to eat from this tree of life at God's paradise is to overcome but look at this, verse 14, Revelation 22, 14. Blessed are they that believe in Jesus Christ alone, not by works. No. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. See, that matches in the book of Revelation itself about overcoming to eat this tree of life. So this is tribulation saint. See, scripture with scripture shows you which application it will go to. So notice here, tribulation salvation is different. In the tribulation, they go by works for salvation, not just faith. You might say, why is that, Pastor? Very simple. You can't deny Jesus Christ, and you must resist the persecution of hell and the Antichrist. That's a lot of work. How many of you deny Jesus Christ in the comfort of your own home today, man? Let well, alone persecution. So that definitely don't apply to you. But us, we don't have to do that. You might say, why? Because we're saved by faith, not by works. That's why. And we're not going to go through the tribulation under the hell of the Antichrist. We're gone. We're raptured before. So notice that at Revelation chapter 2, this closes our teaching concerning about the church of Ephesus. Now, we'll do Smyrna next time.